The moments. Lightning catches, comes down, dribbles, shoots, scores! Bill Jenkins through straight for the win! Go! The legends. The champions. The Grand Clipper fit. The Wolfpack has won the national championship. Villanova hits the impossible. They beat Georgetown. It's over. It's all over. UConn is the national champion. Who will be next? Technology is presented by Staples. It's been a magic season for Illinois and a week of many emotions for head coach Bruce Weber. Now his top-ranked team can refocus on the prize that perhaps awaits them in St. Louis. Bob Knight's won three national titles. His Red Raiders came up short today, but they remain a threat as the madness is set to begin again. Al Skinner in Boston College started out great. His team is sliding. Will he like his seed? We'll hear from him coming up. And also from the coach of the Huskies, the champions of the Pac-10, Lorenzo Romar, a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Welcome to our ESPNU Bracketology Extravaganza. Two full hours will give you a thorough breakdown of the brackets, predictions all the way down to the final four in St. Louis, and the national champion for our panel, and plenty of guest lecturers coming up in the next two hours. I'm Chris Fowler, joined very soon by Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, Reese Davis, uh, let's see, Steve Lavin, Rick Majerus, Andy Katz, a very large cast. Too many to fill up this one court. Well, after all the suspense and the surprises, the chaos and the confusion of championship week and what a week it's been, now we have the order, the tidiness, the symmetrical bracket, and of course, in a few days, the madness will begin all over again. The bracket, of course, is the roadmap to the Final Four in St. Louis, and we'll give you a first look at it right now and then let the guys kind of chew on it. By now, you probably know that Illinois is the number one overall seed. will begin its run nearby in Indianapolis, says the number one seed in the Chicago region. If they can win two games, they can get back to the United Center, where they've won 13 in a row. Potential second-round opponent, Texas, safely in as an eight-seed, or Nevada. Alabama is the five-seed. They'll take on Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Bruce Welber's alma mater. B.C. saw the seed slide down to number four. Let's take on the Ivy League champions. Continuing in the Chicago region, the bottom half of the bracket, these games Thursday and Saturday in Boise, Idaho. LSU made a charge down the stretch in the SEC. UAB, a controversial bubble team, gets in but barely with the 11 seed. Arizona had hoped for a higher seed. The Wildcats at number three against Utah State, a dangerous team. The Big West team was snubbed with 25 wins a year ago, took matters into its own hands by winning the automatic bid. Good bid major battle. The Salukis against St. Mary's in the 7-10 game in Oklahoma City on Friday. And the Cowboys playing very close to home against Southeast Louisiana. Next up, we'll take you to the Albuquerque region. And this is an interesting number one seed. Jay Billis said it earlier today when nobody was talking about the Huskies who beat Arizona two out of three times. Again, we'll visit with Lorenzo Romar. They'll take on the Grizz in the first round game. Pacific will be a tough first round opponent for Pittsburgh. Pacific dominated his league and got the at-large bid safely in at number eight. Georgia Tech, a five seed against George Washington. Colonials winning their first ever A-10 title. History suggests they probably needed to win that game. If you go by their seeding at number 12. Louisville had hoped for more than a four seed. They'll take on the Raging Cajuns Friday in Nashville. Bottom part of the bracket. 
earning the sixth seed. Runners up today in the Big 12. Bob Knight's Texas Tech team against UCLA. The Bruins barely made it in. You can tell by that number 11 seed at 18 and 10. Gonzaga playing in Tucson against Winthrop. Interesting matchup in the second round for the Zags, whomever they play. In Cleveland on Thursday, West Virginia, the hard-charging team against Creighton, a team that at one point was 7-7 seven and seven in the Missouri Valley. Both those teams played excellent basketball the last month and a half of the season. Wake Forest, not a one, but a two by bowing out early in the ACC tournament. We'll take on UT Chattanooga, the 15 seed. Next region, we head to Syracuse now, and North Carolina is the number one seed, despite not getting through the ACC championship game. They'll take on the winner of the opening round game Tuesday in Dayton. Oakland, the team that got in with the losing record. They're from Michigan, not from California. They'll take on Alabama A&M champions of the SWAC in that opening round game. Minnesota safely in as in large. Now Brady against Iowa State, of course, which has been the up and down team. Very quick, small cyclone unit. Villanova, a 5 seed, playing great basketball at the end of the season against the champions of the Mountain West. New Mexico didn't have to sweat out Bubbleville. You saw with the 12 seed, they probably had to beat Utah in that game last night to get in. Florida and Ohio in the 4-13 games. The Gators get to play in SEC country in Nashville. In Oklahoma City on Friday, it'll be the Badgers of Wisconsin. Runners up in the Big Ten against Northern Iowa. This will be a controversial bubble team. Missouri Valley, excellent regular season, but not make it through the quarterfinals of their conference tournament at 21 and 10. History says that they were one of the last teams to slide in as an 11 seed. Kansas down to a three seed against the Bison of Bucknell in the opening round game in Big 12 country. Worcester Mass, Charlotte against NC State, which gets in as a number 10 seed. And Connecticut playing very close to home. They'll take on UCF, a team that is off to Conference USA next year after winning the Atlantic Sun. And now to the region in Austin, where Duke is the number one seed champions of the ACC for the sixth time in seven years against Delaware State. They'll play in Charlotte, of course, where plenty of fans will be able to show up. Carolina's also playing there, by the way. Also in Charlotte on Friday, Stanford shipped out east, an eight seed against Mississippi State. That's a competitive game and a pretty good opponent for Duke in the second round. Worcester on Friday, Michigan State against Old Dominion, their first NCAA since 97 as champs of the Colonial. Syracuse, a four seed. They'll take on Taylor Coppenrath and Vermont. They're making a habit of this NCAA tournament three straight years as they won the conference title on their home court. And the final part of the bracket, Utah slides down to a number six seed. that will be a whack Mountain West matchup against Utah. The Miners winning their automatic bid, not having to sweat things out. Oklahoma, a three seed against Niagara, their first time of the tournament since 1970 when Calvin Murphy was the star. Cincinnati will take on Iowa. You see Oklahoma and Niagara there. 7-10 the game, the Bearcats against the Hawkeyes, who had to slide in, but barely. And Kentucky, not a one seed, but a number two seed as they lose the SEC championship game. A nice regional flavor to that game, Indianapolis against, uh, you see, Travis Ford, the former Kentucky guard. The Colonels will take on the Wildcats in that first game. So these are the teams that are frowning, crying, cursing, or worse, the teams that did not make the cut. There'll be some controversial names on this list. Notre Dame left out despite a very tough schedule in its conference. DePaul also snubbed. Vanderbilt didn't have much hope. Memphis, of course, the heartbreak at the free throw line in their own conference tournament on their court. Buffalo, a very popular MAC at large selection in many of the brackets. Joe Lenardi had them in. They do not get in. And of course, this will not sit well with Indiana. The Hoosiers are left out. So, here's our panel, fresh from the ACC title game. Thank you, Air Vital. What do you make of that? There's a lot to talk about, Dick. We have a couple of hours to get into it, but initial impressions. Well, my initial impression is the committee did a very, very good job. However, I have two teams that I think should be in a tournament that aren't in the tournament. I'm talking about the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. I think any time you go 9-7 and seven with the depth of the Big East, I think they belong in. You beat the likes of Connecticut and Boston College and Villanova, I think they got a raw deal last year and got a raw deal this year. I think the Mid-American Conference was flat-out robbed. There's nobody can convince me you play in that conference and Miami of Ohio wins the regular season, I think they should have been in. That answers another question, who should be out? If you say two should be in, you got to say two should be out. I can't understand. They had a good year. They won a lot of basketball games, but check their pre-conference schedule. UAB. I don't believe that UAB should have been in over Notre Dame or Miami of Ohio. The same one, Northern Iowa. Look at Northern Iowa's record against top 50 teams. I don't believe that Northern Iowa should have been over those two. I think the Mid-American is... 
definitely an underrated conference and doesn't get the respect it should. Number one seed, I think Wake Forest got penalized big time by the fact that Chris Paul not playing in that game. I think they were a lock for number one. Have no problem, though, with Washington beating the likes of Utah, Alabama, and Oklahoma. I think they did a great job. I don't think it really matters much, number one or number two. But I have a problem when they say you define the best 34 at-large teams. You cannot convince me that Notre Dame, Miami of Ohio, even, even a couple other clubs out there shouldn't be in the dance. Yeah, that's the strength of the Big East. When you look at the strength of the Big East, it's become the power conference. And from that standpoint, the last two years, obviously Syracuse and UConn win national titles. It's because of the strength of the conference and the diversity of the coaching styles in that conference. So when you look at the Notre Dame, yeah, you got to say, all right, of 16 games in conference play, yeah, they go 9-7, and seven, and 10 of, those te 10 of those teams that they played against had, a, uh, had an RPI of over 45. When, when I look around the country and see where are we going in a while, the, the power of the conferences to me is the strength of the conferences. Yeah, Kansas blew that number one seed opportunity, losing four of their last six regular season games. And when you see Kentucky go down to Florida, they slid back. But when you look at the seeds, I don't think anything's going to come out of it as far as the one seeds now, the two, three, fours, because there's so many good teams out there, Jay. It's balanced. It depends on who's hot, who's not, who's healthy, and who can just play the defense when it counts, because that's why teams like Kentucky, or when you look at what goes on with a Texas Tech with their guards, these are all teams that can make damage when you look and see how this thing's going to go. I think unless you're a one seed, anybody you're playing can beat you. A couple things stick out to me. One, I think Dick hit it right on the head. There's not much to argue about here on who's in and who's out because all those teams proved they could lose to almost anybody. I don't agree with Northern Iowa and UAB being in over Notre Dame, but that's really a small, uh, small thing to argue about with the committee. The most compelling region to me by far is Syracuse. When you've got a team like North Carolina, UConn, and Florida and Kansas in there as your top four seeds, I think that is going to be the most compelling region out of the four. Now, they're all very balanced, but I think that one gives you more than any other. And people might look and say, well, Duke, once again, doesn't appear to have the toughest road to the final four in that room. Oh, I don't know right about there. that now. I don't know about okay. not having a toughest road when you look at some of those clubs that they got to play. I think they did an amazing job to win that ACC championship, and they've earned the right to be a number one seed. I really believe that. But I think Illinois is not going to have it that easy. When you look who's in there with them, you got the Alabamas, the Arizonas, the Oklahoma States, and don't forget Texas is that 8 9 matchup. We saw it happen last year. Kentucky, when they lost to UAB, and, the, and they were a number one seed. I don't think Illinois is going to have an easy journey to the final four when we get into these brackets. And break it down. You watch Pittsburgh as a number nine seed, very dangerous basketball team. But I think the real surprise of the number one seeds has to be Washington. Jay sang their praises today, and rightfully so. When you look at their resume, they've had some impressive wins, especially pre-conference. And I'll tell you this: the Pac-10 has improved, has improved big time. Even though I don't believe on the VBDI that it's the second best best conference in basketball, nobody can convince me that it's better than the ACC and the Big East. You can get a chance to salute Lorenzo Romar. I'll husband. salute him. He oh, did a great job. Join us. So will Bruce Weber. You know, Coach would tell you there are no such things as easy journeys, but Illinois at least can take buses if they had to get to the Final Four from Indian Chicago and then to St. Louis. We'll visit with the coach of the number one team in the country, fresh off their Big Ten championship in a very emotional week as Coach Weber loses his mother in route to winning that conference title. Stick around. A lot more coming up. Randall, I'm going to need a habit when I get back. Here, use the easy button. How can I help you? I need something that ends in er. Staple er. No. Paper er. Yeah, no. Office chair er. Uh, Wireless USB adapter. Yes! <laughs> need great service? Use your easy button. Staples. Our staff will help you find exactly what you need and get you on your way. Thanks. You. Staples. That was easy. The wheel goes round and round. We keep it moving. Slow down. The wheel goes round and round. We keep it moving. Round and round. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says. At the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. I've got three studios in my house. This is where I do the watercolors. Out here, I like to work with acrylic. Here's where I work with oils. I put Max Life in there, and from one change to the next, you don't have to add any oil. No more leaks. This artwork's not for sale. 
at 75,000. Time to switch to Max Life. And now look for Max Life oil filters. Another good reason to switch to Max Life. Sharp multifunction products transform the office by adding enhanced color to your documents. Then Sharp Technology doubled your productivity by scanning two-sided documents in a single pass. Now Sharp's Data Security Kit is transforming the office again by preventing unauthorized access to information while keeping sensitive digital documents from falling into the wrong hands. The Sharp Digital Imager Series. All the productivity you want, all the document security you need. ESPNU Bracketology is presented by Staples. That was easy. And in part by Ridgestone. Passion for excellence. The Illini and their home away from home in Chicago against Wisconsin. The Big Ten Championship game today. James Augustine played a tremendous tournament here. He'll grab the missed alley-oop and dunk it down the Illini with the early nine-point lead in a low-scoring first half. Now to half number two. The lead is a dozen, and Luther Head gets the nice screen and knocks down the triple. They begin to pull away methodically from Wisconsin, which could not generate the scoring punch to stay with Illinois. Orlando Tucker, the hero in the semis, does knock down the deep shot. Get back within 10 points. Next Wisconsin possession. Cameron Taylor, all of a sudden, well, it's a seven point game with five minutes to go. But just like the regular season meetings, Yelena really wouldn't let the Badgers get that close. Head drives, hits the shot. 54 43 in a grinding Big Ten championship. What a week for Coach Bruce Weber. So, as we showed you earlier, the Illini headed to the neighboring state to take on Fairley Dickinson in the 116 game on Thursday. By the way, they don't get the winner of the opening round game because Indy is a Thursday, Saturday region, and the winner of that opening round game on Tuesday must play on Friday. That's why the winner of that game gets Carolina and not Illinois. Texas and Nevada, of course, awaits them in round two. Diggers already predicted Texas is going to win that game. I'll tell you, Nevada's awfully good. They've got a freshman, Ramon Sessions, who can really play. And Nick Fizikas has some of the best hands of any big guy in America. Guys, quick thoughts on Illinois. They had such a high standard all season long. They enter as the 20th one-loss team to come into the tournament since Carolina won the championship in 1974. Because the standard was so high, people looked at the last four games and say, well, the, the scoring is down, turnovers are up. Are they still as fresh and as focused? Oh, I think they'll be definitely focused. I think when you look at Illinois, they have two major factors that are vital at tournament time. Number one, perimeter play. They are outstanding on a perimeter. I mean, Williams is a stabilizer, Brown is explosive, and Luther Head has been an unheralded player. They're better inside than people believe. And number two, they defend. Whenever you defend and you're strong on a perimeter, you always have a chance to win. They got great fans that are passionate, and I really believe this club is going to march on. When you look at the improvement of what has changed Illinois to me, it was James Augustine when they went to Wisconsin in the second half after Wisconsin beat them last year. They knew they were on a payback game on the journey because they were still undefeated number one. The fact is this, when they got to Wisconsin in the second half, it was James Augustine that showed the maturity with the way he scored and got points in the paint and a rebound. Since that moment, he has become a force in the paint. We saw it in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. I really think their defense is solid, and they are so strong with Darren Williams running that offense. But more importantly now, they have a presence in the paint. And for you to make a difference in the NCAA tournament to win a national title, you've got to be able to go inside, you've got to be able to go outside. And Darren Williams is the quarterback getting the shots to Powell, the Brown, and Williams. But more importantly, himself, he knows how to dish it to James Augustine. You know, I think the thing, at least in my judgment, that sets them apart is they're a magnificent passing team. And everybody says they make the extra pass. I would go one step further. They make the right pass. And when they make the right pass, they've got players that can finish those shots. Now, Illinois hasn't been shooting the ball, especially well of late in their game against Ohio State and their games in the Big Ten tournament. They haven't been knocking shots down like they did early on in the season, but I think in the NCAA tournament where the games are called a little bit closer, that is going to be advantage to Illinois because they play that motion offense system. They've got older players that make great reads. I give them a major advantage because of that. I think they get used to playing against each other. When you start playing in conference tournaments, you've seen each other two or three times during the year, so People you have that record. Tennis. Yeah, they know your tendencies, but more importantly with this, they are so tough to defend man-to-man -man wise. I think think when we saw him play Michigan, the zone bottom a little bit. And if Texas gets by this game with Klotz and Buckman in the paint playing that 2-3 zone, Texas could be a team. We look at an 8-9 upset in that first round into the second round. Texas could bother them because of what Danny Gibson is in that backcourt. It should be an interesting
interesting matchup if they get by Nevada. Hey, if Fairleigh Dickinson wants a chance, guys, all they got to do is get the five best high school players that work out there every summer when they have the All-American <laughs> camp. Take those five. I mean, in the past, they've had Tracy McGrady, all the supers, line them up, and then have a shot with Illinois. Right it's now, a late to it's beef a, up your roster. It's I think, M&M, the baby. It's have a to mismatch. Play, you're going to have to play with the hand that is a pat. Illinois has done a great job, guys, I think all season long of playing managing the pressure of, of the quest for history now can they play loose can they just focus game by game and, and not play to avoid the loss it'll be interesting to watch we're not done talking about illinois we're gonna have bruce Webb. you can get a chance but we want to if you make the <laughs> tricky entry pass around the corner you can reach our coach's corner where reese davis rick majerus and steve lavender stand by guys chris what you have to do is you got to put a lot of spin on a bounce pass to get it over here to us uh, rick and steve are here when you look at when you look at illinois right now rick and we've heard the guys talk about how dangerous they are in their experience what is it specifically that makes their guard so hard to defend? They run the most difficult offense in the game to defend. They run passing game. They have five guys that can shoot and stretch and space the floor. When they screen, they step off the screen and space the floor well. They maintain their spacing throughout the possession. And they complete their cuts outside of the collegiate three, sometimes the NBA three. Now you've got the best decision maker in college basketball passing the ball, Darren Williams. You've got a great athlete in Brown who can break you down and create his own shot, particularly so in transition. Then you've got Head, who is the toughest of the tough. All these guys have got a middle game. All have got a draw and kick game. They can pass in a draw and kick in the half court. They throw it ahead easy early in transition. And when Augustine and Powell do post, they can feed it in the post, and they have good action around a post player. So I believe that those are the reasons why Illinois is going to win. And I like their offense. They're, although they're tough-minded defensively, and they don't get run on, it's a half-court game, and it's a guard game, and tournament play, that's why I'm picking Illinois. Uh, Steve, now I know you got a chance to see the Illinois a, a lot during the Big Ten season. As you look at the top part of that bracket with Illinois, do you see a team there that's equipped perhaps to give them trouble? Well, as Rick said, you know, they have played the most consistent of anybody in the country from the beginning of the season to this stage here in the tournament, and they're going to need to continue to do that. This bracket, I think, is the toughest when you look through the field. Their road, very difficult. That second round game, whether it's Texas or Nevada, that's not a gimme. And then you go out one, Boston College and Alabama in the Sweet 16. You go a step further, and you're looking at Arizona, Lute Olson, Eddie Sutton, guys that have been to the Final Four with Oklahoma State and Arizona. So there's not a gimme in their road to the Final Four. But again, with the three guard offense playing close to home their fans following them in that region I think uh, they have what it takes to make it to the final four you know I felt like that when they were pursuing that perfect season that they really weren't burdened by the expectations of being undefeated they lost the game at Ohio State you were around them how do you feel like that, that they handle pressure their demeanor and so forth? Well, I'd say you know Bruce Weber has pushed all the right buttons this year in terms of motivation and I think this group has been through so much first Bill Self they had success with him the transition to a new coach they had success last year a sweet 16 before going out to Duke and then this year a magical run so they have handled the pressure the burden of being a number one having the bullseye on their chest they've won at different speeds playing quickly in slow down grinder games they've just been resilient group and again I think they're gonna rally around coach Weber mm -hmm. during this difficult time with the passing of his mother right and Rick really quickly the Illinois loss how do you think that impacts? If for no other reason a loss was good because you don't want you don't want Roger Powell taking a three-point shot when you got three great shooting guards and Augustine, the, maybe the best big shooter on the perimeter, if nothing else, they have to reorder their priorities, and that'll tighten them up. That loss was good because to win that game at Ohio State, they didn't give themselves a chance when Powell takes the last three-point shot. Yeah, Powell rushed that shot, maybe had a little bit of time, but certainly didn't hurt Illinois that much. Number one seed in the tournament, Chris. Well, Reese, the Illini can win a few games. They might meet. Oklahoma State in the regional final in Chicago. Cowboys took on Bob Knight's Red Raiders in the Big 12 championship game in Kansas City this afternoon. Daniel Bobbick makes the steal. That'll really please Bob Knight, I'll bet. Let's get a cutaway in his thoughts on that turnover. Yeah, he didn't like it very much. <laughs> Tech would make a run, though, in the second half. Ronald Ross, a terrific story. The ex-walk-on, all-Big 12 first-teamer hits the jumper. And Zeno dribbling, hanging, hitting. All of a sudden, Texas Tech leaves it with seven minutes to play. But then Joey Graham, what a tournament the seniors had in Kansas City. The basket and the foul. OSU up by one. Running man, John Lucas, pushes it. Now it's a three-point lead in the final minute. The veterans of Oklahoma State, who didn't play that well down the stretch, made the plays down the stretch in this game. 
Sutton beats Knight for three times this season, and Oklahoma State earns that number two seed at an opening round game against Southeast Louisiana with that mid-major opponent in round two, St. Mary's over for uh, Southern Illinois. Back to Reese and the coaches for their thoughts on this part of the bracket. All right, Chris, you look at this now in Oklahoma State after finishing the regular season, I guess in a little bit of disappointing fashion because they didn't win the Big 12 regular season championship. Riggs, you look at Oklahoma State, um, how, how dangerous is this team right now as far as trying to make a return trip to the Final Four? When Bobak is playing well and when he accepts his role and he relishes the defensive assignment because he's playing for one of the three best defensive coaches in the game, the Graham boys are going to play defense and they get back in transition. You cannot run on Oklahoma State and their post defense is good by virtue of their size inside. They come and attack penetration as well as anyone. They do a great job in what the V-back is. When, they, when you, they come to penetration, they help that helper by dropping down to the baseline better than anyone in the game. And what they do is they get that inside rebound position with their guards rotating down. You see, they'll open up close to home in Oklahoma City on Friday against Southeast Louisiana. But, Steve, it's that game in the first round that could be a potential second-round opponent for Oklahoma State, assuming they get past this one, that has your interest. In yeah, outstanding matchup. Southern Illinois and St. Mary's. The Gales, coached by Randy Bennett, done a tremendous job this year. Daniel Kickert, another player from Down Under who's done very well from Australia for the Gales. Paul Marigny, an outstanding guard. E.J. Rowland, their point guard, has been playing extremely well. So this has made this St. Mary's team has made a lot of people feel good. You got to go back to Frank Apples, Cadelka, Biff Burke, <laughs> Tom Macheri since St. Mary's has been this good in Southern Illinois. Darren Brooks, an outstanding player as well. Syracuse bracket getting a lot of love, but you like this one. You <laughs> think this is the toughest one, the deepest one. Tough road for Illinois, you think? Yeah, I think six teams yeah. capable of cutting down the nets. All right, we'll see. Maybe Illinois not quite as easy a road as some think, Chris. Well, Reese, uh, that's what's part of the magic of this tournament. There's so many interested parties, so many opinions, and including opinions of famous people. And throughout the show, we're going to have March Madness memories from various folks. Now, as far as Illinois, many distinguished alums of that fine institution, including Hef. Well, I'm certainly a, a basketball, a college basketball fan this year. I, I'm a graduate of the University of Illinois. And we're the top team of the nation. March Madness is the best tournament. I mean, because it's over a short period of time. That's what's wonderful about it. It's a tournament. It's over a short period of time. And each team takes on a different personality. And it's kind of fun to see what's left of somewhat of innocence. I mean, it's not really, but it's the last vestige of it anyway. I remember when uh, Larry Bird played, of course, with um, against uh, Magic Johnson. That was uh, really wonderful. That was probably the highlight of uh, what I remember about college basketball. Uh, you're talking to a guy who went to the University of Houston, so I, the, the pain of Albuquerque and Jim Valvano, may he rest in peace, is a memory that I, I don't know if it's a favorite memory, but it's never going to leave me. Coming up, we'll see if the Tar Heels can make some memories after losing in Washington, D.C. The Heels are talking about needing to regroup and hitting the practice court hard. They are a one seed, however. We'll talk about their bracket just ahead. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff. Get your camera phones ready to catch a G6. Snap a picture of a Pontiac G6 anywhere you see one and send it in by March 18th for your chance to win a million dollars. Go to catchag6.com to learn more. No, wait. Come back. Oh, please come back. I don't even know your name. How will I find you? Wait. Please wait. Mademoiselle. Senorita. Just a moment. Lots of Toyota models, hundreds of choices. Toyota's nationwide spring sales event with thousands of amazing values. Now through March 14th, your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers have just announced an extra $1,000 off your best deal on a new Camry. That's $1,000 over and above all other factory incentives. Or get $500 off all these new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. But you've got to use it or lose it by March 14th. Toyota's nationwide spring sales event. Now that's moving you forward. They're coming. Chevy's all-new 2005 Cobalt and Corvette. Get a really good look at them and the rest of our exciting lineup at the Auto Show. 
And right now, you can get more than a good look at the Chevy lineup at your local Chevy dealer. A lot more. Like $500 Auto Show bonus cash on top of most current incentives on select Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. See your Chevy Network dealers today. Official vehicle of the Cleveland Browns. Welcome to ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. North Carolina, so talented, so deep, and sometimes so mysterious. You want them to be more dominant. They are 27-4. and four. They are number one seed in the Syracuse region, playing very close to home. Their opponent will come out of the opening round game Tuesday in Dayton. Oakland or Alabama A&M with Minnesota or Iowa State to be the second round opponent on Sunday down there. North Carolina, very un-Carolina-like basketball as they bowed out to Georgia Tech in the ACC semis. I mean, Roy Williams looked like a guy who was kind of searching for answers. In fact, he used that word, searching. He talked about not playing Carolina basketball, the lack of assists, the turnovers, the lack of defense, possession in, possession out. Now, guys, they made a habit of playing from behind in the last few games and believing they can just step on the gas and turn it on when they need to. Well, you're exactly right. They didn't play with the same kind of passion that they played all year long. Remember, they won the tough ACC regular season. Won it in 93 was the last time, and they won the national championship. Also that year, they got beaten in the ACC tournament. I think we make so much about finishing hot. Well, let me tell you this. 2002, Maryland won the national title, and they got bumped in the semifinals by North Carolina State. I think by far, North Carolina is in a tough region of them all. When you look at that region and look at those teams that are in front of them, unbelievable. I mean, look at the likes of the Connecticut's, the Kansas, Oklahoma's, unreal. That region is so tough, but I think they're going to regroup. Why will they regroup? The Williams guys. They have not played like they did earlier. Jawan Williams is like 8 for 28 in his last three games. Marvin Williams, who's absolutely magnificent, was 1 for 7 in his last two games. They shot 30 plus percent 30 like 5% in the last two games and that is not their normal they have been shooting over 50% because they've been getting layups in transition the running game wasn't there they got to get back Chris passion and feeling and I think guys they celebrated when they beat Duke cut the nets down and they thought that was it strut into win that ACC tournament well let me tell you nobody's gonna lay down people are gonna play at another level and they're gonna have to earn the right to cut the nets down That's but I think they will. <laughs> well, when you see championship teams, you look for a team chemistry. And I didn't see that when we were in Washington, D.C. this weekend. And when you have that team chemistry, you have a certain intensity and you stay focused. Well, there's certain games you look at if you're scouting against North Carolina, how you see the concerns that can help you trying to beat them. Against UConn, UConn had 16 blocks, which means they weren't taking the ball through them. They weren't dunking it if you pass it off. That was one concern. Against Clemson, 35 points Clemson got off of 19 Carolina turnovers. And Georgia Tech yesterday, 21 offensive rebounds for 25 points. You break down in those three areas, you're not going to move to a regional final, let alone trying to get through the Sweet 16. This is what it comes down to for North Carolina for me. they got to guard people. If they don't guard people, they can't get their running game going. If they don't get their running game going, they're a half-court team, and that's where they're going to get beat. When they get up and down the floor in transition, North Carolina, in my opinion, is unbeatable. And, and this team can only get out in transition if they guard and make defense a priority. You can't just be four guys. You can't just have 80% of your defense run right. Otherwise, you're going to give up baskets, and you're going to have to take the ball out of, your, out of the net and run your secondary break, and that's going to be it. And at the end of their game against Georgia Tech, Roy Williams turned to his bench and, and, and gathered gathered everybody together. I was right near the bench, heard exactly what he said. He said, we can't win the national championship unless everybody does what they're supposed to do on every possession. And I've never heard a coach say a truer statement in a basketball game. And I hope his players were listening. If they were, they're going to win the national title. You know, Jay, I'll ask you right here in Digger. Maybe I'm overrating it, but when I look at that region and I see the likes of North Carolina, Connecticut, and that whole gang, Florida as a number four seed, having a great run right now, I think it's the toughest region out there. I don't think there's any question about 
about it. I mean, regional minds can always differ, but let, look at what could be the, the regional semis. Carolina, Villanova, Kansas, UConn. You've got Florida in there. Iowa State is a potential second-round game. Charlotte, who's playing as well as anybody in the country during the major part of the season, the last three games, they fell down. That's a really, really difficult region. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't even think about, you know, Kansas and Connecticut, they may have to get through Villanova, a very tough New York City. And Florida's players hot. Players what am I Florida. Loose and very relaxed. Florida's confident. confident. Very well right now, Florida. Here's the bottom part of that region, the Syracuse region, Wisconsin, of course, and never a, a fun team to play. And Northern Iowa, a lot of teams will be watching them that didn't get in to see how they Wow, wow. Hey, guys, guys, think yeah. about it. Just dawned on me. You could ultimately maybe have North Carolina and Kansas. What a sure. thing about Kansas. Wow, Roy Williams and Bill Self. Woo. But Kansas, to me, is a mystery team also because they can play so well. Wayne Simeon's the target on that team. Obviously, got to get King Lankman get back Lankman. because if Lankman comes back, there's another spark. And when you look at now their bench, I think they're going to get better production on that bench. And I want to see them pressure more. I think they've got the depth. I think they can play better full court man to man defense because then it allows you to play more aggressive at half court. But Simeon is a force that not many people can handle. Aaron Miles can run that team as good as anybody. And this Kansas team's had enough losses to have that wake up call, especially blowing the Big 12 Conference tournament in Kansas City to make a run in this region. Well, I think, guys, they got to have Langford. I don't think you can lose, get Jay, a key component component of your offense at this time of the year and not get hurt. I just worry about their shooting. I don't think they're a very good shooting team. They're seeing a lot of zone. That could be a problem in the NCAA tournament. I think Kansas and Kentucky are very similar teams. They both have scoring droughts, and with scoring droughts in the NCAA tournament, that's when you get bounced. You know, I don't think Roy Williams wants to coach against Kansas. He never liked you to think? coach against Carolina <laughs> when he was at Kansas. I think he's, he likes the kids on Kansas, but I think he'd like to see him get knocked off before that regional Heck final. Yeah. That'd be very, very difficult for him trying to get to the final four and coach against Who the players that, that he's known that would be for awful. so long. Of course, the other part of this whole domino, Roy Williams goes to Carolina, Bill Self goes to Kansas, and Bruce Weber comes to Illinois and does great things in the season number two there, and he joins us now from Chicago. Coach, first of all, congratulations on winning the Big Ten, and certainly from all of us, the condolences on the loss of your mom. You have to have such a mix of emotions. I mean, excitement, anticipation, eagerness to get going, but also you have to be a little bit emotionally drained as well. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's been a long week losing at Ohio State last Sunday. Coming up to Chicago and then losing my mom and uh, kind of a, you know, a, un, you know, we did not foresee that at all. And so it was an emotional day and, and our kids did a great job really playing hard yesterday for me and getting a victory against Minnesota. We came back and beat Wisconsin for the third time today. Thought we played great defense. We didn't shoot the ball very well, but uh, when it comes time to the NCAA tournament, uh, you've got to guard somebody, you've got to rebound, it gives you a chance. Okay, now you're aware of your road map to the Final Four. You can make just bus trips over to Indy if you win two there. Of course, back to Chicago, your home away from home, and St. Louis is pretty close to your campus. Initial thoughts on, on your draw and the teams that may uh, lie in your wake, and, and your team's mindset heading into this tournament now. Well, I think they have a great mindset. Uh, it was definitely one of our goals to get a one seed. We've talked about Indy, Chicago, St. Louis since the beginning of the year, and I kind of gave them a, a, that as a goal chance to be you know familiar places the family get to come to the games it's got to be easy on us but it, it doesn't guarantee us anything and the thing we've really focused on all year everyone says the target's been big you know you've had, dealing with number one all the attention we've had the kids have really focused on each game each week and and that's all we're looking forward to right now just going to indy taking care of business and then if we do that go to chicago see what we can do there Bruce, coming off that Ohio State loss, it had to be an interesting week of practice, and you get through win the Big Ten Conference Tournament Championship. What concerns do you have about your team as you get ready to play, trying to get that national title in St. Louis? Well, I was worried about our defense. I think we've clicked that in. We played great defense the whole weekend. Uh, rebounding was a, you know, a definite question mark, and, and our inside presence. But uh, James Augustine's MVP at a tournament had a great weekend. Roger Powell was very big for us today. I think our bench, Jack Ingram and Nick Smith, have come in and, and given us a solid minutes. So those were two of our worries. Now, I haven't worried about the guards all year, but they've uh, struggled shooting this, this last week. And, you know, get back, in, in, back to Champaign, shoot a little bit tomorrow, Tuesday. Hopefully you get a good rhythm coming into Indianapolis. Hey, Bruce, certainly our sympathies go out to you. I, I just don't know how you can do it. I know how emotional it's got to be and the pain you've gone through losing your mom. I mean, unbelievable. I want to share with you right here, though, and have you respond. Tell us when you felt you came in such a tough situation. I mean, Bill Self was so popular with all the fans, popular with all those kids. You came in. When did you feel, wow, this is my team. I finally have grasped all these kids. 
Well, I think it was about midway through last season. We were at Indiana, and Indiana was 5-1 and one at the time, and it looked like they might, you know, kind of take control of the league, and we came from behind, won a hard-fought game. It was a close game, and we got into that locker room, and there was just so much excitement, and, you know, they were hugging, chest-bumping, all the stuff that you do in the locker room after a big victory, and it seemed like right after that point, we, you know, we made the run, we won all the rest of the Big Ten games. Uh, you know, won the Big Ten uh, Conference uh, Championship, and it seemed, that was maybe a turning point. And slowly but surely, we kind of got everyone on board. D. Brown was the last one, and once we got him on, him on board, uh, you know, it just seemed like we've been clicking ever since. Bruce, how do you want your team to, to act going into the NCAA tournament? By that I mean, do you want them loose? Do you want them tight? I, I mean, how, how, do you, how do you think they should act going into it? Well, I think it's, it's, it's a fine line. One, you can't look too far ahead. And, uh, you know, we've done that all year. It just, it just happens. I've been talking about each week since the beginning of the season. I've never done it before, so it's worked out with this. I think the, you, there's still got to be a little bit of a fear factor, knowing that you have to play at a high level, the, and maybe that's where the Ohio State game, uh, you know, helped us get a little bit of a wake-up call because they would have been in the tournament, I think. They would have been in a 7, 8, a 9, somewhere in there, and that's the team that can beat you if you're not ready to play. Uh, but at the same time, they are a very loose group. group. I, I didn't do that. I didn't create that. They're just a fun-loving group, and I think that's why we've been able to deal with all the attention all year. We look forward to watching your team. You know, one quest for history ended with that loss in Columbus, but you still have a chance to make history. You win six more games. You win 38 for the season, and you claim the record shared wow, by Billis' wow. Duke team. I'm not saying he's rooting against you, but you would take one of Jay's. <laughs> I'm <Jay's>. not. <laughs> hey, I wonder how he's going to hey. handle all the distractions. Well, the ticket request so close to home. Well, wow. That's Especially from Digger. <laughs> <laughs> that's the downfall of being close, uh, that you got so many people asking, but we deal with it I in need Chicago, four, baby. So I need four. Need <laughs> Call hey. our SID. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Pass the buck like any smart coach would do. Hey, Coach, thanks for uh, taking time and joining us on a very tough weekend for you. Look forward to watching your team, and best of luck. Thank you, guys. Bruce Weber of Illinois. Another number one seed, of course, the Blue Devils of Duke. Perhaps not Krzyzewski's most talented team, certainly not his most talented team. He's had to really work hard and do a great coaching job, but they are once again ACC champs. We'll talk about their road ahead. Tonight on the season finale of Tilt, it's down to the final round. Ready to lose? Big words from a little man. Who plays? I'm all in. I get the bracelet. You get half the wings. Now that wouldn't even be cheating. And who gets played? Somehow I think I'd end up in a shallow grave in the desert. We made a deal. She got to arrest you, but I got five minutes before you went in. Tilt, the season finale on a special night tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Toyota. There's a place for us. Somewhere a place for us. Peace and quiet and all. For those in the academic, medical, and cultural fields whose work serves the greater good, we serve you, TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. It's tourney time at Hooters, and that means the nets are full. Yeah, looking pretty slick there, coach. We've got great basketball action and our finest floor seafood menu, featuring our easy peel and buffalo shrimp and our new beer battered fish and chips. Register to win a trip to St. Louis for championship basketball with me. So get to Hooters for net time today. Hey, I'm still fishing. Me too, and I just hooked the largemouth. Look at him. He thinks this is his truck, but he's wrong. This is my truck. Eight years I've sat here. 130,000 miles of wind have passed through this nose. This truck is mine, but he does protect it. Help extend the life of your engine with Castrol GTX High Mileage, specially formulated to protect against oil burn-off better than competitive leading oils. Nice man. Nice man. Help older cars feel young again with Castrol GTX High Mileage.
Innovative Insights is brought to you by Audi. It's greater to lead than follow. Audi, never follow. Well, you've heard our panel weigh in. Now you're invited to join the conversation on ESPN.com, our Sports Nation poll question. Which of the four regions is the toughest? I'll show you how things are shaking out a little bit later on in the show. Right now, Syracuse, clearly seen as the toughest region. The other three are kind of a, a toss-up. Already 13,000 of you plus have voted. Well, stationed under the basket, which is about the only place he's a threat to score, with the ball is Andy Katz with his NCAA Tournament Nuggets. Andy? Well, thanks, Chris. They'd probably call me for three seconds if I don't hurry up here. Anyway, I talked to uh, a member of the selection committee that was in the room, and he, they told me that they didn't complete this bracket until about 540. They really struggled over this selection process. And here's a couple of things and one little national note that we want to tell you about. First of all, why was Washington the fourth number one? Believe it or not, the committee was really impressed with their win over Arizona. That's what left the lasting impressions. Now the matchups, you've got a lot of interesting ones here with Kansas possibly playing North Carolina, North Carolina possibly playing Duke. Well, the committee wanted to make sure everyone knew they don't look at the matchups. You may not believe them, but that's what they said. What was the difficult part of the bracket? It was the top four lines and the committee did wait for the Sunday results, ACC, SEC, Big 12, and we can see some of that in the results of the brackets. They labored for hours over how these mid-majors should be selected and seeded, and that's why you'll see like Northern Iowa in the back side of this bracket. They really spent a lot of time on this. And nationally, what is the status of Keith Lankford? Well, I spoke with Kansas earlier this afternoon, and they told me that he definitely will play in the NCAA tournament. Remember, he injured his ankle in the final game against Missouri, but did not play in the Big 12 tournament. So that's a key addition back for Kansas. Chris? They don't play till Friday, and it's a little extra day of rest there. We'll talk about the Blue Devils and their roadmap to the Final Four. They had to scratch and claw in the ACC Final today. Now, perhaps, is a match against Kentucky ahead in the Regional Final. We'll talk about it. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, one, lift off. Get your camera phones ready to catch a G6. Snap a picture of a Pontiac G6 anywhere you see one and send it in by March 18th for your chance to win a million dollars. Go to catchag6.com to learn more. For more in an auto parts store, get ready. Advance Auto Parts is working harder to make our stores better than the rest. Get ready for an auto parts store unlike anything you've experienced before. Get ready for a cleaner, brighter, better place to shop. Get ready for a store organized so you can easily find what you're looking for. Get ready for in-store innovations you won't find anywhere else. When you want more than just another auto parts store, the first place to go is Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in Hey, nice Harley. Yeah. Yeah. Had to get it, you know? It's great. It's the way I live my life, you know? By my own rules. Well, that's my creed or motto. My credo, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like to live, like, by the edge of my... Can you believe the crime in this town? It's crazy. It's in broad daylight right in front of us. It's like, hello, it's my bike, miss. Maybe you should get your own. He's been known for many things. You're cute. Creep. Ungrateful son. But settling down was never one of them. Until now. I'm gonna get married. I want to have kids. Say hi, Bobo. Hi, Bobo. He eats his own poop. This ladies' man will try to become a one-woman man. How do you make it work? Internet porn. Antidepressants. John Stamos is Jake in Progress. A special sneak peek tonight, 9, 8 Central. Series premiere Thursday, 8, 7 Central. Only on ABC. Welcome back to ESPNU Bracketology. 
presented by... I played two Stable. games in the tournament. We went to the Sweet 16. I had two really good games. Against Villanova, I was coming off. I went scored 23 points and did really well. Tim Thomas. And the next time we went to Syracuse, we were playing against North Carolina. Dean Smith, is, it's his last year in coaching. And I'm walking down the hallway before the game, and he's walking down the hallway. And we pass each other, and he stops me, and he says, hey, I just want to tell you that you're a very, very good basketball player. And if you wanted to, you can go to the NBA, because I had already declared I was going to the NFL. And, you know, that was probably the biggest compliment I could ever get from anybody. I mean, Dean Smith, are you kidding me? And, you know, that's probably the biggest memory. I think it's a tournament effect, you know, that you're going to limit it down. There's going to be one winner. And I think that's kind of what's missing in college football is there's never one winner. You know, you got a bunch of bowl champions and, and winners. And, um, in, in college basketball, no one decides who the national champion is but them. And that, that's what everyone loves to see. I remember um, in high school, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, I mean, in high school we would go, I would go down to my basketball coach's office uh, when I had like study halls, and we would go in and we'd just sit and watch uh, Madness on his TV. And uh, sometimes I might be a little late to uh, my next class because we'd be stuck in there watching the games. Let's see what Ben thinks of the, the Mac bid situation. It all begins for the NCAA opening round game, 7 o'clock Eastern time from Dayton, Alabama, A&M. The Bulldogs out of the SWAT conference against the Oakland Grizzlies, the mighty Cinderella's losing record to get into the field of 65. In the ACC final today, Duke in it for an eighth consecutive year, taking on the Yellow Jackets, who hadn't won it in more than a decade. Tech down by 11, second half, and Jarrett Jack will land awkwardly here, twists his ankle, forced to leave the game. Real concern the Georgia Tech contingent, but he would return to the game. Under five minutes to go, Tech down eight. Jack back, hopping down the three, and Yellow Jackets came charging back into this game after Duke seemed to be in control, up by 13. Jack, the tough leaner, gets the banker to go, cuts it to five, still playing in a lot of pain. Final 10 seconds, Yellow Jackets down by three. Boy, they had some good looks down the stretch, including this one from Will Bynum. Yesterday's hero, but not today. Paul Hewitt's team clawed back, had their chances, couldn't get it done. With four seconds to go, McClure missed two free throws, but Sheldon Williams there for the clinching tip-in as he just out-muscles Luke Schencher. He did it all afternoon. Jack's heroics unrewarded as Georgia Tech loses for the 11th time, but safely in the field. And Duke, meanwhile, ACC champions for the sixth time in seven years. That is a remarkable accomplishment. Delaware State, the first opponent. Stanford, which is 5-4 and four without Dan Grunfeld, their leading scorer the last nine games. Mississippi State take on the Cardinal. Rick Stansbury said his team played with no urgency, no sense of importance in the SEC. He'll look for them to refocus. Michigan State, Old Dominion, and Syracuse against the Catamounts of Vermont in a Northeast battle in Worcester, Massachusetts. Hi, right, guys. What do you make of this, this Duke region? I would say if Carolina has the toughest throw to the Final Four, the Blue Devils is the, the least challenging. Not, I'm going to say easy, the least challenging. Well, I totally disagree with you. I think that's the <laughs> second toughest region when you have the likes of Kentucky and so forth in that region. I really think there's some great second-round potential games. Syracuse, Michigan State, Utah, Oklahoma. And what about Kentucky and Cincinnati? They don't play, and here it is. They're going to get a chance to hook up in the second round. As far as Duke today... I thought a great performance, but they've been magnificent all year. One of the greatest coaching jobs that Coach K has ever done. I hope he's our Olympic coach in 2008, and if he gets to the Sweet 16, he passes Michelangelo, Dean Smith, for the most wins in the tournament. Digger, I thought J.J. Reddick's the National Player of the Year. They find a way to win. This club today was hanging on against a game Georgia Tech team, but they found a way to get to the winner's circle. Six times in seven years, it's hard for me to phantom when you think about winning the ACC championship of the tournament. And when you think of Duke, you think of two things on this year's team. It's their defense that gets them the points that they need because they shut you down. But it's J.J. He's incredible. He is the clutch guy. He goes one for ten in the first half against Virginia. Doesn't play well. Gets 35 points yesterday against NC State. But then today, he hits the two big baskets and put him up 47-37 when Georgia Tech's trying to make that run. But the thing is, when you take Ewing and Reddick together, 
They are so good. They complement each other. And just watching them up close today, they really work hard. And J.J. is so good coming off those screens and waiting. And, boy, when he just comes off, he knows how to fire. Or now what he's done more of this year, Jay, he takes it to the hole. And that's a new dimension for him. It is a new dimension. He's in much better condition, and that's allowed him to absorb a beating because I think he gets guarded harder than almost any player in the country. I, I think it is Mike Krzyzewski's best coaching job with this Duke team because he's had to inject so much of his personality and his emotion into this team. It's not a team full of natural leaders, but I don't think Duke is playing great basketball right now. They're playing well, but they're not playing great, and they don't have a margin for error because guys like J.J. Redick, Daniel Ewing, and Sheldon Williams, they cannot have a bad game if Duke is going to win. I give Syracuse an edge, actually, in the regional semifinal in this region to beat Duke and advance. Syracuse is playing much, much better with the style of play that they have. I would give them an edge if they take on Duke in the regional well, semifinal. Well, wait a minute. i got to correct you on something, okay, because you're wrong. <laughs> i got to flat-out correct you. Coach K's best coaching job, he told me this, was trying to get the most out of you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. If they play Syracuse, that'd be a terrific match of uh, you know, different styles of defense. Uh, and, and oh, wait a minute. Sean Dockery, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Michigan State is going to roll over for Syracuse? I got Michigan State possibly beating the Cuse. I mean, that's a dangerous game, Chris. I believe I said if. If they Well, uh, if. Rudy Kipling, is it Kipling that said if, too? There's nothing but if, Sierra. It's Selection <laughs> Sunday. I think it was interesting. You see what Sean Dockery, the, uh, the injured player for Duke, there best defender. Some of the Duke folks say he's expected to come back to practice. He might he actually be able to return, huh? He told me today, I spoke to him, he said to me today that he expects to play in the tournament. He had a smile on his face. He felt like a million dollars, and he said he is going to play. All right, let's go back to uh, Reese, Steve, and Rick for the other half of that Austin bracket, guys. Hey, you know, Chris, it might surprise you. There's a little disagreement on Duke-Syracuse here, too. Hey, Steve likes their chances, likes Syracuse's chances, and Rick thinks they would have some defensive challenges. But in the bottom half of that bracket, you see a couple of heavyweights from major conferences. You got Kentucky there sitting. They didn't perform well against Florida in the SEC championship game. But you have Kentucky, which is certainly capable, especially defensively, Rick. Duke has to get, Duke has to have, I mean, pardon me, Kentucky has to have a concern about getting too happy with the three-point shot with Sparks. Rajon Rondo struggles with his shooting. Mm -hmm. He's a great defensive guard and a speedster, but they're going to have to go inside and incorporate Morris and Hayes. They went to Hayes to win the championship yesterday. Hayes delivers down on that block. He has a tendency to get up that high post, settle for a jump shot, when in fact he could be a low post force collegiately as a wide body with paint catches, particularly if you have a guy like Sparks picking for him and then coming back up off a down screen again. They can space the floor with Sparks, incredibly so, but they've got to go inside and establish a paint presence on the offense. Their defense is superb. In the bottom half of that bracket, Steve, uh, you're sort of sweet all of a sudden on these 7-10 matchups, huh? Well, that's a really interesting matchup. You look at Cincinnati, number one in the country in field goal percentage defense, and uh, Eric Hicks and Jason Maxiel, the bookend, uh, really undersized power forwards for uh, Bobby Huggins really tough to go against. And then Iowa playing well of late and also had some big wins over the course of the year. That's why they made the NCAA tournament wins over Texas and Louisville and Michigan State in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. So Iowa-Cincinnati, a really rugged match. But I think Kentucky gets to the regional final against Syracuse and Syracuse wins out with that national championship experience. Do not sleep on the Sooners. You know, the Sooners and Kentucky play each other is so deep. Both of these two teams, they play 9, 10, 11 guys if they need to. That would be a terrific matchup. When we continue, Bob Knight will join us. Texas Tech had a great run through the Big 12 tournament, a little bit short against Oklahoma State on this day. See what Coach Knight thinks about his Red Raiders. Find Ronald Ross' performance this season. His home in Bracketology rolls on. Brando, I'm going to need a or have it when I get back. Here, use the easy button. How can I help you? I need something that ends in er. Staple er. No. Paper er. Yeah, no. Office chair er. Uh, Wireless USB adapter. Yes! That's it. Need great service? Use your easy button. Staples. Our staff will help you find exactly what you need and get you on your way. Thanks. You. Staples. That was easy. Please rise for our couple's first dance as husband and wife. ESPNU available on DirecTV. Call 1-800-
travel 7,000 miles all the way from Russia just to join the school. The Ohio Center for Broadcasting offers job placement and more hands-on experience than most four-year colleges. It's the whole experience and hands-on that I'm really pleased with. The teachers here are very friendly, very optimistic, and very encouraging. Here at this school, they'll actually help you to find a job. They'll give you leads, and you can just follow up from there. Even within the first week, I made a contact within TV News. For a career in radio or television, the Ohio Center for Broadcasting. Hi, Little John here for Earl Olds GMC Truck. Now is the time to buy that GMC that you've been admiring. And we've got them all. Denali's, Canyons, Envoys, Yukons, Sierra, commercial trucks, used cars, used trucks. Big ones, small ones, they're all here. So come on down and pick one out. And if you own an Oldsmobile, our Mr. Goodwrench can fix it. Earl Olds GMC Truck, we are professional grade. And welcome back. Bob Knight's Red Raiders come up a little bit short in the Big 12 championship game today against Oklahoma State, but uh, head into the NCAA tournament, the first round matchup with UCLA. And, and Coach Knight joins us now. I know you have such a, a deep affection for all the conference tournaments. You did well in this one, and now you can focus on uh, what really matters in basketball. Tell us how you feel about your team heading uh, to the field of 65, Bob. Well, I think that we've played uh, a lot of good basketball over the course of the year and, and, and a lot of good minutes here in the, in the three games that... Uh, we've played. I, I kind of chuckled when you mentioned my uh, affinity for uh, conference tournament basketball. There's probably nobody in the history of the game that uh, was more opposed to it than I was, but Bill Russell once said, hey, it's scheduled. Let's go play it. Let's win it. And so I think that you try to do that uh, uh, certainly in a conference tournament uh, scenario, and, and I was pretty pleased with uh, most of our play during the three games we've just had. Ronald Ross is such a great story. For folks that don't follow you guys week in, week out, know about this former walk-on who had such a great career journey and it became first team all Big 12 and a guy that I, I think you expect to, to have to play well if you guys are going to advance in this tournament. Well, you know, Ronald is, I, I think, a tremendous example, not just for kids, but for everybody. Here's a kid that when he graduated from high school had no scholarship offers uh, at all to a Division I uh, school. And uh, he came with us, came from Hobbs, New Mexico to, to Lubbock uh, with us at Tech uh, when we first got there as a walk-on and uh, worked and worked and developed and he brought a lot of athletic ability, a, a lot of physical skill with him, but I've not had a kid work harder than he has. He goes from no scholarship to a first team all-conference player uh, just simply based on his own initiative uh, and his own willingness to do as much as he could with what he had. It, it's a great kid uh, with a great story. Coach, you've navigated this tournament so many times over the years. What would you say is the most important thing in preparing your team for NCAA tournament play? Well, I really think that, that uh, rest may be as important as anything. I think that uh, all of a sudden, uh, coach is excited, the players are excited about uh, getting into postseason play, uh, whether it be the NCAA or the NIT. Uh, uh, and, and you have a tendency from a coaching standpoint maybe to do too much or, or too long or, or not spend enough time simply on making sure that after a long, difficult season, uh, your kids are as well-rested and as energized as possible. Hey, Bobby, Dick Vitale, I want to simply say, you know you were my coach of the year this year in the Big 12, doing an amazing job getting maximum out of your people. I want to simply follow it up on what Jay said. There's nobody that knows really more about what it takes to win a national championship, having won three of them. What would you say are three major factors, one, two, and three, right now to win six games in a row? Well, I think you've got to have uh, some depth because you're going to have games where you get into foul trouble. There's always an injury factor. Uh, I think a team, first of all, has got to be uh, very good defensively because there are some things uh, that can happen at the other end of the floor uh, that, that are not going to be particularly conducive uh, to winning. And when that does happen, uh, turnovers or, 
uh, shooting slump or not getting to the free throw line, uh, and that'll happen to anybody uh, at some time uh, in tournament play, then I think that you're, you've got to rely on, on your defense. And then the next thing that I think you've got to be able to do, your third thing, Dick, is take care of the basketball. I think that a team that uh, can limit the number of times it turns the ball over simply increases the number of opportunities that it's going to have to score in a game. Bob, I, I didn't know you were a part-time racing driver on weekends. Is, are those NASCAR logos, or <laughs> what, what's this all about in there? I mean, I really well, we, respect what you're doing, but we, I can't read them all. We, we've taken uh, <laughs> taken uh, advertising to a higher level. <laughs> seriously, uh, no, seriously. In, no, wait, in, wait, your in, team, one of your concerns, being honest about inside presence, you don't really dominate inside. What concerns you when you have to go up against that type of team that can just go after you inside? Well, we probably have to make some defensive adjustments in terms of help uh, that we might not want to make, but, but we have to make. And, and we've got, and I think our inside kids have done uh, a really uh, good job basically over the course of the season. Uh, we probably uh, need a little bit more scoring uh, from our inside game, and we try to make up uh, for that with uh, an emphasis on our guard play. There have been times when I've had teams that the emphasis was on the front line. Uh, other times, uh, we've had uh, we've had to go with with more uh, offense from our guards than I would generally like. But as you guys know, teams change, and and with the changing. Uh, complexion of a team, uh, so too does what you do on offense or what you do on defense have to change. Hey, Bobby, Digger is really jealous because that sweater, the cash register goes ding-a-ling-ding, <laughs> and he wants a piece of that change, baby. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Uh, Digger's stuck with uh, green and gold sweaters, and who wants to see anybody in a green and gold sweater? <laughs> hey, Bob, uh, we, we salute your 28-20 uh, your win season, your 27th NCAA bid, and we know where to go for spark plugs. So uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we look forward to watching your team. It's UCLA. Well, I... Go ahead. Let, let, let me just tell you guys at ESPN something that, that really comes from my heart. You do a great job uh, for college basketball. It's something that I think all of us in college basketball really appreciate. And uh, no one other than DirecTV does the kind of job for college basketball <laughs> He's got another pop that you going. do. So just make sure that uh, you get the Mega March Madness package <laughs> from DirecTV. Well, thank you. Make sure yeah, it's ready for NASCAR. Make sure it's HD. That's why he's a Hall of Famer right there. <laughs> All right, Coach. Uh, they get the Bruins and then perhaps Gonzaga in the second round. But it's the Huskies out west who are the champions of the Pac-10. We'll visit with Lorenzo Romar. See who he wants to pop when we come back. Introducing a new kind of beer. Budweiser Select. Brewed for a crisp taste that finishes clean. A beer this good was a long time coming. Step up to new Budweiser Select. Crisp taste that finishes clean. Be selective. Boomerangs remind me of Australia. They remind me of my heartburn. It keeps coming back two, three days a week. So I carry these. Hey, that's frequent heartburn. Maybe you should try a different kind of medicine. Like? Prilosec OTC. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of acid pumps. That's why one pill a day can work for 24 hours. 24 hours of zero heartburn. Bye-bye, Boomerang. One pill a day. 24 hours. Zero heartburn. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Get your camera phones ready to catch a G6. Snap a picture of a Pontiac G6 anywhere you see one and send it in by March 18th for your chance to win a million dollars. Go to catchag6.com to learn more. During the week, I work in the shop, working on cars. Uh, on the weekend, we come out here, I uh, wind up working on race cars. This is what I drive to the desert. This engine used to smoke when I started it up. Max Life Oil greatly reduced that smoke. 198,000, still going. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. And now look for Max Life Oil Filters. Another good reason to switch to Max Life. 
Tonight on the season finale of Tilt. Ready to lose? Big words. My little man. It's down to the final round. I get the bracelet. You get half the winnings. Tilt, the season finale on a special night tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Toyota. This is ESPNU Bracketology. Presented by Staples. I'm from Arkansas, so a big Razorback fan, and we've had some amazing basketball teams in the past. Not lately, <laughs> but uh, we won the national championship in, what, 93, with Corliss Williamson and those guys. And that was maybe the most excited I ever was in my life. When I saw them win the national championship that year, I, I, I was beside myself. I think there's always that potential for David to beat Goliath in that tournament, and I think that's one of the exciting things about it. Uh, I, I love NCAA tournament. Well, maybe creep up while you were sleeping way out west. Washington has become one of the Goliaths of college basketball. They win the Pac-10 title. They beat Arizona two out of three, and they are the number one seed playing Montana Thursday in Boise with a matchup against Pacific or Pittsburgh if they get by that opening round game. What a story Washington has become under Lorenzo Romar. We welcome in the coach of the Huskies. Now, Coach, congratulations, first of all, on that Pac-10 title. We, we love the way you guys play. For folks who perhaps don't follow Washington basketball or know that much about the Pac-10, which was the number two conference in the RPI, and say, why the Huskies a one seed over teams like Wake Forest, Kentucky? You don't have to defend it, but, but make your case for why you guys deserve that one seed. Well, like you mentioned, we are the number two RPI conference in the country. Uh, the Washington Huskies, us, have a number three RPI rating. We've had a top ten uh, strength schedule. Uh, we've had success against top 50 teams. We just won the Pac-10 uh, conference title, conference tournament title. We've had good wins uh, over some quality teams this year. So I think uh, we definitely, definitely should have been considered for a number one seed. We love the way you guys play, you know, the, the three-guard offense, Nate Robinson, Conroy, Trey Simmons shooting the ball, pushing the tempo. But what if you went into a team, perhaps Pacific or Pittsburgh in round number two, that wants to slow it down, wants to grind you, control tempo, and, and not let you get to the free throw line? Well, you know, we're not going to look past Montana, but uh, even if Montana is that way, and we've uh, not got to look at a whole lot of tape on them yet, but we have several teams in our league that uh, kind of play more of a methodical pace. Washington State has had some good wins uh, this year in our conference playing their brand of basketball. Stanford kind of slows it down a bit. UCLA kind of plays uh, both paces. They can play up-tempo and they can also slow it down. So we've had heavy dosages of uh, kind of slower uh, physical type basketball. Lorenzo, congratulations on a number one seed. I think you set the tone by going out to the Great Alaska Shootout, and I don't think people realize beating the likes. Jay and I were talking about it flying down here. I mean, you beat the likes of Oklahoma and Alabama and Utah. I think that set the tone for your season. But looking at your club, I want to talk a little bit about a club that's near you guys, and that's Gonzaga as well. Gonzaga has a win over you guys. Obviously, they probably feel very disappointed. They're not a higher seed. What do you think about the possibly, ultimately, playing them again that could be a possibility as you look at the brackets uh, they're close by uh, Gonzaga is a team that quite frankly over the years has kind of had their way with us we haven't uh, done well against Gonzaga they, they've beaten us I think seven straight times seven or eight something like that uh, but they're a good team they've they've been uh, NCAA battle tested I'm sure they'll do well this year uh, if that were the case, we would be ecstatic because that would meant that we, we would have beaten Montana to start this thing off. <laughs> you better beat Montana as a number one seed, baby. That's never happened before. <laughs> yeah, that, you, you're right. But I'll tell you what, you, you, know, the, you know what I'm going to say. It's the first game, so we got to approach that one and that one only. Yeah, don't make history that way. Going into this season, you, you know you had your starting five back, you had some bench coming back, but the guy to me that makes this team go, gave up football to play basketball, Nate Robinson. Is that toughness from football carried into his leadership in basketball? Oh, there's no question. Uh, Nate is fearless. He is not in in intimidated uh, by anyone or any place or any team. He just goes out and gives it his all. I think the only person that uh, uh, realizes that, uh, I think Nate knows 
that uh, he's got a big heart. He goes out and plays tough. People realize he's small, but Nate doesn't know it. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, I don't know if it's the toughest region, but there's a lot of very talented offensive teams, and uh, the nation will learn a lot about the Washington Huskies if you guys can make a run in the next few weeks. Lorenzo, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me on. All right. Worried about Montana in round one, as any coach would be. Don't make history that way. Don't, don't get to a one seed and then lose to Look Montana. Look at those tapes tonight, baby. Don't take anything for granted. All right. Let's check in with the folks at ESPNU, the brand-new all-college sports network, to Mike Hall and Doug Gottlieb, guys. All right, Chris, thanks, and Lorenzo might not want to watch this segment. I'm here with Doug Gottlieb in our new studios here at the U, and, and right when the brackets came out, Doug, the first thing we said is who got snubbed, yeah. and you didn't say it was one team that was left out. It was a lot of teams. Well, I just think there were 64 teams that got snubbed, because Washington, quite frankly, does not deserve a one seed. It's not even close. I know they had those victories over Utah, Alabama, and Oklahoma in the Great Alaska Shootout, but as they were just saying, they returned five starters from last year. Their learning curve was way ahead of those teams, and as the season progressed, Remember, they lost at UCLA, at Gonzaga, at Arizona, at Oregon State just a couple weeks ago by 17, and at Stanford last weekend. That is not the mark of a number one seed. You have to have quality road victories. Washington has essentially none, and that's why, in my mind, they're a very good story. They're a good team. They could go far in the tournament, but they don't deserve a one team. That's the mark of a champion winning on the road. Good team, but just not a number one. All right, let's look at some of the teams who were not able to make it in. Who got snubbed? I left out of the tournament. Well, let me start by saying I'm not sure you can make a true true statement that anybody got snubbed this year with the exception of Buffalo because a lot of these teams especially the big conference boys they stumbled out coming down the stretch and quite frankly even some of the teams that got in didn't deserve to get in but the Missouri Valley Conference one that I've covered for the last couple years is a good one but it is not good enough to warrant three teams Buffalo from the MAC another very similar conference and Buffalo listen they lost on the last second shot they belong in Maryland tell me how Iowa with seven conference wins can compare with Maryland with seven conference wins, especially ACC, on the road, ACC a much better league, and Iowa doesn't have big wins on the road since Pierre Pierce has left that team. And Notre Dame, yeah, they got snubbed, especially considering the quality of their best wins. You've heard Jay Bill say it in the past, they win at Indiana, they win at Villanova, to be Connecticut, and they're the first ones to give Boston College a loss. Those are my teams that you could say got snubbed. Here's some of the other ones that just lost out. St. Joe's, think about this, coaches know this, and the guys in Bristol know this, teams progress over time. St. Joe's lost two first-round picks from last year's team. They turned it around. They won their league by three games. They beat George Washington at George Washington. They, too, belonged in ahead of Northern Illinois. Excuse me, ahead of Northern Iowa and ahead of Iowa, if you get right down to it. St. Joe's and Buffalo, both very hot, winning eight of their last ten games. Well, this was the Charlotte 49er team in our studios earlier as they found out their number seven seeding, taking on NC State at number 10. It's a great time for college sports. From us at the U, back to you, Chris. Well, Charlotte was rolling along, and they stumbled down the stretch. Interesting to see if uh, they can uh, regroup Baz and company in the NCAA tournament. Well, Buffalo seems to be a, a popular team to talk about. I mean, there's Gottlieb, you know, advocating a MAC team that has seven conference losses, nine losses overall, and lost to Ohio U, what, a few times this year? You know, I respect all our colleagues, and they're certainly entitled to their opinions, but there's no way in the world you could sit down and break down Washington and tell me they're not a legitimate contender for a number one seed. I mean, those wins they've had have been very impressive. Arizona, to be two out of three times. You could take every team out there and show they've lost to this team, that team, that team. As far as snubs go, I really think the minimum. American Conference is one of the most underrated conferences in America, and I think Miami will buy Ohio, who is the regular season champ of that conference by one game over Buffalo. I thought they got snubbed, and I thought Notre Dame. I think the Big East was the toughest from deepest conference in America, toughest being the ACC with their three heavyweights. I thought Notre Dame got a raw deal as well. The only team to me that really got snubbed was Notre Dame. I agree with you, Dick. Winning on the road at Indiana early on in the season. I mean, they had a number of wins that were marquee wins. Villanova, UConn, Boston College. And if the measure is who did you play, who did you beat? Notre Dame played all comers in the Big East and they played them well and they should have been in the tournament. And, you know, a lot of these different teams have gotten discounts for having guys injured. Not, well, Notre Dame had Chris Quinn injured when they played Pittsburgh in the last game of the season when they played Rutgers in the tournament. Not having him to be able to shoot the ball really hurt them. So if you're giving all these other teams 
teams discounts should give Notre Dame one as well. Who would you take out? I would have taken out UAB and I would have taken out Northern Iowa. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of you know a lot of qualms about the the 65. I, I do have a qualm. You know, saying that Washington doesn't deserve a number one seed, I just don't agree with that. I don't I mean, either. I, I would I attack either. that idea. You that were on it idea very early. You were on it when nobody was saying it. Yeah, you were. I mean, you know, this morning I thought they were a number one seed. I still think it. I yeah, think Jay, you were the pick. first one. You said it this morning. I had them charted in as a number two seed, <laughs> but I can handle them being a number one seed. Everybody else lost. Because Maybe everybody got beat, Kentucky, etc. They have had a great, great year. Digger, I know you're a Notre Dame guy and you love Notre Dame. I know my daughters went there. Has nothing to do with my feeling. My feeling is nine and seven in the Big East. You beat Connecticut, you beat Boston College, you beat Villanova. Take the likes of UAB, take Northern Iowa, play them in that conference, and you tell me if they'd go nine and seven, Digger. And they're a very talented team. Yeah, they're five and six their last uh, 11 games, and they're 10 out of their six league games are against teams in the top 40 RPI. And, and the strength of the Big East, we're seeing it every year, how this conference has won two national titles the last two years. But Notre Dame played Syracuse twice, Pitt twice, UConn twice, Boston College once, Georgetown, Villanova twice. Great and point. they beat West Virginia by 13 at West Virginia. That's so if you're point. picking the 34 best teams, I don't know how you leave out Notre Dame. Well, you know, that's why it's a great point what Digger just made. They had to play probably as tough as anyone in the Big East in their rotation. They played all the tough, tough squads. I find it, you know what I really believe? Okay, there's a love-hate relationship, Notre Dame, the Yankees, and Duke. I just wonder if there is a little scenario because they got left out last year as well at 9-7, and seven, and I simply say that is not fair. There's a conspiracy against Notre Dame? Well, I'm not saying anything about conspiracy. I, mean, never I agree with Jay. This committee is a very honest group of people. They love intercollegiate athletics and they do that, which is right. However, I say here, they were definitely a situation should have been in a tournament. I'll tell you what, in the great basketball hotbed of Indiana, there's not a lot of joy. The Hoosiers, shh, Purdue, obviously an awful season, and Katie Swansung and Notre Dame is left out. A lot more still to come. These guys will have predictions on the Final Four and even the national champion and uh, more guests ahead. Stick around. Come on, baby, do that crazy soul. I know you're gonna lose the soul. You can do it. There are riding mowers, and then there's the edge cutting system. Only John Deere gives you the edge. With your John Deere dealer behind you and dependability beneath you, you'll always have a John Deere yard to look forward to. Nothing runs like a deer. Now get a free cart with select John Deere tractors. Let's talk about better. When someone says something's better, it's usually just their opinion. So if you suffer from acid reflux disease, frequent heartburn, and I told you prescription Nexium heals acid-related damage in the esophagus better, you'd want proof. And now, your doctor has that proof. Recent medical studies prove Nexium heals that damage better than the other leading prescription medicine. No wonder they call Nexium the healing purple pill. This is big news, so call your doctor today and ask if Nexium is right for you. Because if left untreated, the damage could get worse. Other serious stomach conditions may still exist. The most common side effects of Nexium are headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Hey, with Nexium, you don't just feel better. You are better. And better is better. For a free trial offer for Nexium, visit us at nexiumproof.com or call 1-800-4-NEXIUM. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Get your camera phones ready to catch a G6. Snap a picture of a Pontiac G6 anywhere you see one and send it in by March 18th for your chance to win a million dollars. Go to catchag6.com to learn more. No, wait. Come back. Oh, please come back. I don't even know your name. How will I find you? Wait. Please wait. Is that a 
Bell! Senorita! Just a moment! No! You're watching ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. The NCAA tournament where dreams are made and certainly players become uh, big names on the NBA draft board. A lot of players usually make their names in the NCAA tournament. We want to take a look at a couple of guys that certainly could make a name for themselves here this month. Sophomore Charlie Villanueva, he wanted to go last year to the NBA draft. If he has a bust out March, he could be going early in June. Now at Illinois, Luther Head is a senior. We know he's gone. Darren Williams, he's going to go to the draft. But Dee Brown has been sensational this season. He has not talked to NBA, but what would happen if he has a bust-out march? He could do kind of what Delonte West did last year with St. Joe's. Down at LSU, Brandon Bass wanted to stay in the draft last season, but he decided to go back to school. What did he do? He became the SEC Player of the Year. If LSU has a nice run, Bass could possibly go to the NBA draft as well. Now, Sean May has said... He does not want to declare for the NBA draft, but he has been maybe the most consistent player for North Carolina this season. He's been dominant inside, averaging 16.5 and 10.7 rebounds a game. He's going to be a player to watch throughout the month of March. Washington, the top seed out west. Junior Nate Robinson, he declared, came back because he wanted to be in the Final Four. Well, now he's got a shot with a number one seed. So Nate Robinson's another player to keep an eye on as we go throughout the three weeks here in March. Now, Kennedy Winston down at Alabama. There was some talk that he was going to maybe declare. That didn't happen. Remember, he has had some bust-out games. 33 in a triple overtime game against Charlotte. He had 21 in a key win over Mississippi State. So he's another key player to keep an eye on. Now, we always have some coaches. Last two years ago, we talked about Stan Heath. Last your Matt Painter. Bruce Pearl is a coach to keep an eye on at UW-Milwaukee. He's in the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years. If openings occur in the Northeast, the Big Ten, the Big 12, he will be a hot name. Randy Bennett. Well, first we're going to talk about Greg Marshall out of Winthrop. He has been to the NCAA tournament now five times. He was up for maybe the South Carolina job, job in the Southeast. If he has a nice run, look for Marshall's name to pop. And Randy Bennett at St. Mary's. They were one of the last teams to get in. He wants to stay there, but they got to make the commitment like Gonzaga did in the WCC. So who knows if there's a job open in the West. Randy Bennett certainly could be one of the key names that pops. Reese, you've got a couple of coaches out there that have certainly done well in the NCAA tournament, but they didn't have to move. <laughs> That's right. They're coveted commodities, both of them for sure. Rick Majerus and Steve Lavin here. Rick, I want to go back to this idea of teams being snubbed and how you can fairly evaluate one against the other when you're trying to fill out those last few at-large spots, particularly in the so-called mid-majors versus a Notre Dame that didn't make it. Listen, I don't own a computer and don't know how to operate one, <laughs> much less a calculator or a slide rule, which is what this whole RPI thing has become. That RPI should be changing the letters to RIP, rest in peace, <laughs> when this thing is over with. But I do know this. I did coach at Ball State. We did go to the NCAA. We went deep into the tournament there. Teams won't play it. So in Northern, Illinois, Northern Iowa, you're relegated to who will play it. You got Billy Bob Thornton on. I'd like to date Angela Jolie. She wouldn't <laughs> date me. <laughs> I'm looking why she dating him. But in spite of that, you know, you're, you're Miami, they, they like to play somebody, Charlie Coles and those guys, but they won't play them. The one thing I would say about Notre Dame, no question like Maryland, Notre Dame, if you're picking the best 34 teams, those teams are in. But when you're Northern Iowa and you're sitting out there, or you're Miami of Ohio, you can only play teams that will play you, whereas if you're Notre Dame, you can go play a lot of people now. Let me tell you, sir, they played UCLA, they played DePaul, mm -hmm. but they could have gone out and got anyone. Anyone will play Notre Dame on a home-and-home -home schedule. No one will play Miami of Ohio or Northern Iowa on those kind of schedules when they're good. Uh, it did work out okay for Northern Iowa this time around, not so well for Notre Dame, even though they had the opportunity you talked about. And when it comes to the number one seed, you've been chirping in my ear for two years about Washington and the Huskies. You've been on them to get in and on them for a number one seed. When you look at that bracket that they're in, their guards are terrific, but they're certainly not the only team that's very guard-oriented. Oh, no question. You look at the Albuquerque, you talk about entertaining for the fans. It's all about guards. Guards in the NCAA tournament, so critical. How about Will Conroy, Nate Robinson? We know Derek Ravio, Gonzaga, Jarius Jackson, Ronald Ross at Texas Tech, Dijon Thompson, Jordan Farmer, Aaron Afalo at UCLA. 
Krauser at Pittsburgh, Chris Paul, Justin Gray at Wake, Taekwon, what are you doing? Louisville, Garrett Jack, D. Elder, Will Bynum, all guards, so all quarterbacks, mean? guards. What does it mean? NCAA okay. tour, the most exciting breakneck phase, guard play. you just talking about lights out basketball. Syracuse region, hot teams. If you're North Carolina, you're facing a lot of teams who won their conference tournament. And even if they didn't win their conference tournament, Reese, they were teams playing well down the stretch, like Villanova. You listed all those guards. You didn't give me Joe Hair Bear. You didn't give me Patrick <laughs> Beeline. West Virginia's there, too. We'll make plenty of picks coming up. Get you to the Final Four and also the national champion, Arizona. Certainly a contender for a while. Thought to be a contender for a one seed. We'll see if any of the guys have the Wildcats moving into their Final Four or perhaps even to the national championship. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential, to be the best that you can be. I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're gonna be winners. I've got three studios in my house. This is where I do the watercolors. Out here, I like to work with acrylic. Here's where I work with oils. I put Max Life in there, and from one change to the next, you don't have to add any oil. No more leaks. This artwork's not for sale. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. And now look for Max Life oil filters. Another good reason to switch to Max Life. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential, to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. Hi, I'm Matt Damon. I'm here with Chris Moore and Wes Craven and, of course, Ben Affleck. Where's Affleck? Anyway, uh, we created Project Greenlight in order to give amateur filmmakers their first big break. And this time we're making a horror movie. So we've got the master on board, Wes Craven. You know, he doesn't look that scary to me. Oh, God, no! Watch the horror of making a movie from executive producers Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Chris Moore. The new season of Project Greenlight premieres this Tuesday at 9, 8 central, only on Bravo. If you're deciding between DSL and Adelphia high-speed internet, maybe the best thing to do is consult your inner child. Faster! 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 There you have it. If you're looking for a faster internet service, then the choice is clear. Adelphia high-speed internet. You get the fastest download speeds and the most secure online experience. All for a price that's less than you'd expect. So, why settle for DSL? Call now and get high-speed internet for $26.95 per month for six months. Everyone gets excited about Buffalo Wild Wings takeout. Some a little too excited. From wings spun in one of 12 sauces to burgers and salads, get Buffalo Wild Wings takeout today. And be sure to grab a 32-ounce Coca-Cola. Buffalo Wild Wings. Get it to go. Honey, you forgot your wallet! is ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. Now, it's been more than 30 years since a team with just a single loss has won the national championship. Illinois, their road map to St. Louis goes to Indy, and they hope back through to Chicago. D. Brown was the Big Ten Conference Player of the Year. It wasn't an easy choice. He knew he was going to be one of the Illini, but Brown got the nod over his teammates. He is the second leading scorer in the team, the best three-point shooter, led the team in steals, and has an assist to turnover ratio of about 3-1. to one. Other than that, didn't have much of a year. Here is D. Brown on the art of the fast break in our state of the art. This is showtime out of Champagne. Oh, highlights from D. Brown. I'm D. Brown. I'm going to show you the art of running a fast break. You got a piece of that? Ah! You run a fast break is putting pressure on the defense, knowing your personnel, knowing uh, how to execute the fast break as far as your teammates running. You, you, you putting the ball in the right place for them, taking care of the basketball in transition. Whenever you get an outlet, you should always see the whole floor. The butt should be to the sideline. You should always see who's in front of you. When you catch the ball, you look at the who's running. Where's your teammates running? And then you look right at the defender and see how he's playing you. 
and then you make your decision who will get the shot and who gets the easy basket. And here comes Steve Brown with his feet. Got hit to his left. Alley oh. Favorite part about running the break is just getting out there and using my speed and just, just the excitement of it. You know, you, you can get an easy basket. You, you can do a nice little flashy move. Brown spins. What a move off glass. It just changed the momentum of the game. Can they execute the break well enough to get to the final four? We'll ask our panel of experts. Predictions are coming up. And also, we continue to hear about uh, final four memories from famous folks. Golf, not the only sport Tiger Woods focuses on. The Stanford grad shares why he loves March Madness. No matter what you've done during the season, one and done. That's it. So um, you got to bring it. And it's just the enthusiasm level of, you know, kids out there competing, not for any money, um, not for anything but themselves and their school. Tubby Smith um, beat our Cardinal um, when we got to the Final Four, and we had him beat. And, um, and we were at the Players' Championship watching it, and I was just so bummed out that, you know, that happened because I thought that was our chance to win it all. Tonight on the season finale of Tilt, it's down to the final round. Ready to lose? Big words from a little man. Who plays? I'm all in. I get the bracelet, you get half the wings. Now that wouldn't even be cheating. And who gets played? Somehow I think I'd end up in a shallow grave in the desert. We made a deal. She got to arrest you, but I got five minutes before you went in. Tilt, the season finale on a special night tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Toyota. Randall, I'm going to need a or have it when I get back. Here, use the easy button. How can I help you? I need something that ends in er. Staple er. No. Paper er. Yeah, no. Office chair er. Uh. Wireless USB adapter. Yes! That's need it. great service? Use your easy button. Staples. Our staff will help you find exactly what you need and get you on your way. Thanks. You. Staples. That was easy. Sharp multifunction products transform the office by adding enhanced color to your documents. Then Sharp technology doubled your productivity by scanning two-sided documents in a single pass. Now Sharp's data security kit is transforming the office again by preventing unauthorized access to information while keeping sensitive digital documents from falling into the wrong hands. The Sharp Digital Imager Series. All the productivity you want, all the document security you need. It's a place for us Somewhere a place for us for those in the academic, medical, and cultural fields whose work serves the greater good, we serve you. TIAA CREF Financial Services for the greater good. You're watching ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. I can tell you my least favorite. I can tell you my least favorite, too. It's probably the same one. Leitner hitting the shot. Yeah, yeah it God. almost killed me. I don't know why I hated him so much, either. I, I didn't go to, you know, I didn't ha really have any right to have anything against Duke. They'd come up to Harvard every year and beat us by about 80 points. But it just, that just whole team, I just loved Kentucky. I loved Mashburn. I, I just, I was so pulling for them. I was on my way to the party. When, uh, he, when he turned and hit that shot. It just really matters to him. They're, they're playing. playing for team. They're yeah. not playing for money. It's also, you know, the games always, almost always end up being close. It's my favorite time in sports. It really is. Anything can happen. Anybody can win. I mean, besides, obviously, World Series baseball, which is my favorite <laughs> time in sports, that March Madness is, uh, is definitely my favorite. Maybe get a little love for Boston College out of that from the Red Sox fan, too. You know, it looked like behind the UCLA bench when you were coaching there, <laughs> all of that star power. You know, we usually try to give you some picks here, let the people figure out how to fill out the brackets, Lavin. Well, how do you look? Here it goes, the racing form, clairvoyant skills, the crystal ball right here. Here's Preston. the elite eight. I like Washington. I like this eight right here. Obviously, you're looking at a very, very talented group. And then advancing to the next group. I like Illinois playing close to their home. Washington, a great matchup there. North Carolina, Roy Williams going after. The one thing that's eluded him in his incredible career, a national championship. As you advance out the final two, Illinois and North Carolina. And I'm going with the Tar Heels to cut down the nets. I think the most talented team in the country. I think six potential players can play at the next level. Probably two lottery picks and maybe three first-rounders. And Roy Williams, an excellent coach. I just think a team now with McCants back in the fold that can cut down the nets. 
You don't know how lucky you are. You picked Syracuse. So you <laughs> picked chalk all the way through all the one seeds. Come on, what do you think, Rick? Well, I don't know. I've, I've, I've got it this way. I've got Illinois and Oklahoma State, and I've got Georgia Tech and Wake, North Carolina, Connecticut, and then Duke and Kentucky. Now, I've got Illinois winning with the backcourt, facing Wake. I've got North Carolina playing Kentucky. Then I'm going to take Illinois because of the guard core facing the most talented team in the tourney. And I'm picking the guard core to stifle and get back transitionally and keep Carolina in a half-court game. I'm picking Illinois to win a half-court game. So it's the guard play that, you get, that sells you on Illinois, right? Because the absent, there's an absence of any pronounced post players. The best one is Bogut at Utah, but I don't think they'll make the Elite, the elite Eight. But if they do, he could certainly present some problems once he gets there. Yes, All he right. could. All right, Andy Katz, you get an opportunity to do this, too. What do you think? Well, remember, when you look at this, you always have to do the opposite of what I picked, because last year I blew it by picking Stanford over Connecticut. So let's look at the screen here. I'm going with Illinois to advance over Arizona. No big surprise there. But then in the bottom part of this, at the beginning of the season, I went with Wake Forest. I'm sticking with Wake Forest. Syracuse to upset Kentucky here. And then in the national title game, staying in the ACC, Wake Forest to avenge their loss to Illinois earlier, to play North Carolina, a rematch from January 15th. I went with Wake Forest at the beginning of the season. I can't give up on them now. Chris Paul will be back. He'll be a possessed, poised player in the NCAA tournament. All right, Andy, it was a great regular season match. We'll see about the rematch. Maybe Matt and Damon will give Boston College some love. They were unbeaten for a long time. Al Skinner's going to join us. Had a great run for BC. We'll see what the Eagles coach thinks in a bit. You know why I respect you, Michael? Because you always prove them wrong. When they said you couldn't play defense, you won Defensive Player of the Year. When they said you were a ball hog, you became Chicago's all-time assist leader. When they said you couldn't win a championship, you gave them six. Then, after all that, they said there'd never be anyone better than you. Ever. But with all due respect, they're about to be wrong. Again. It's turning time at Hooters, and that means the nets are full. Yeah, looking pretty slick there, coach. We've got great basketball action and our finest floor seafood menu, featuring our easy peel and buffalo shrimp and our new beer-battered fish and chips. Register to win a trip to St. Louis for championship basketball with me. So get to Hooters for net time today. Hey, I'm still fishing. Me too, and I just hooked a largemouth. <laughs> Here's your Bud Light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think I'm just going to go freshen up a bit, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Look, look at that. <laughs> it's so uh, funny that you like to dance as much as I like to dance. Hey, yeah. Well, okay. She's a little annoying, so but I'm desperate. <laughs> oh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you meet Coop? Coop. Uh, she's annoying, but I'm desperate. She's annoying, but I'm desperate. What's that all about? <laughs> Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Nice try, pretty boy. It's all here. Well, it was a season-long battle for respect for Boston College. They won their first 20 games and split their last eight. Al Skinner joins us now, a man that 
Coach uh, Dick Vitale was telling us earlier this afternoon he once cut you when he was head coach of the Pistons. He ended up getting fired, and it's worked out okay for you in coaching. So uh, congratulations on that. you have any, uh, any thoughts on the, uh, the snub years ago by Dickie V? <laughs> like I said, that was a long time ago. So, I mean, I... You know, I was a young man then, and, you know, it hurt them, but I, I guess I've gotten over it. Hey, Al, uh, let me tell you this. I made a big, big mistake because if I had you there, you were a winner, great defensive player like you've done with your kids. But to get to your basketball team, you've done a great job this year. You are my national coach of the year for getting so much out of your players when I cast my ballot. I want to ask you this, though. We just got news about Jermaine Watson. What is his status? And tell us the situation because it just came to us that he was involved in something that wasn't or it wasn't really pretty. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, he got attacked. But, it, you know, it looks like he's going to be okay. He got a bruise on his hand and his, and his hip. But I think he's going to be fine. And uh, we're looking forward to having him back on Thursday. Can you elaborate on the, on the details of the incident for us? He was attacked? No, not, yeah, not, not right now. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, still being under investigation. And, you know, so there's, you know, there's no much, much more I can say than that. Um, but, you know, we feel like, uh, you know, he's going to be part of the team. Al, this is Digger now, the new mayor of Boston, as you did my campaign <laughs> back about February 8th. Um, seriously, though, looking at your game against West Virginia, they played that 1-3-1 contained press, trap, half-court zone, and you end up shooting like 5 for 20, shooting threes. What do you think you've got to do to adjust to your perimeter game, as well as trying to get Dudley and, and Smith more points in the paint when you face those zones? Well, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is it wasn't our offense that was a problem. In my opinion, it was more our defense and the way we responded. I, I didn't think we went out and guarded as well as we should have. I, I looked at their numbers. They shot 65% for the, in the first half, 70% from the three-point line. So I, I looked at our defense and not so much what we did offensively. Uh, I think offensively you're going to have nights where you just don't shoot the ball, but defensively we got to make an effort. And early in the season when we were playing obviously very well, uh, it was a defensive effort that, that allowed us to stay in games and win games. I think we got away from that a little bit, and I like to think that we're going to kind of fall back into that mold. I definitely know that the kids' attitudes are that way, and so we're, look, we're looking forward to uh, getting into the tournament and just reestablishing ourselves. Al, you had a great start throughout the season, 20 wins to start off. And Did your kids feel like they didn't get the respect they deserved, and does that sort of drive them heading into the NCAA tournament that not many people are talking about how good Boston College really is? Well, there's no question. I mean, you're still talking about a team that, from what I understand, did not get not one vote in the AP for the top 25. And it's a team that won 24 games last year, lost to Georgia Tech by, you know, in the last, on a couple of, on, a, on the last, not the last second play, but a couple of plays at the end of the game. So, you know, it was a team that was returning seven out of its top eight players. And, you know, not to get one vote is, is really kind of a, a slap in the face. And I think, you know, I think that's been an edge. But all season long, we've been kind of focused on getting back to the tournament and considering and how well we played against Georgia Tech, but unfortunately did not win, uh, you know, we felt like we were a team that had to be contended with. So we're at the point that we wanted to be, and now we got to look to take advantage of the opportunity. Is your team's mindset okay? I mean, you had some pretty humbling losses down the stretch. You had a big senior night spoiled as Pittsburgh came in there and manhandled you. Does your team have enough confidence and feel good about itself going forward from, from this point? Yeah, there's no, there's no question about it. I, I, you know, there, there are reasons why, why those things happen, and we can, there's no question that we can bounce back. I really like the, the attitude. We've had some practices since then. Uh, the way they've bounced back has well, has well with practice. So I, 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 as I told them today, I'm pretty confident that, that we can go into this tournament and do well. And just, again, we're kind of going back to the basics, that type of thing, and I like some of the things that I've seen. And, and uh, so we, we'll hopefully we'll be able to execute that come Thursday night. Okay, Al, thanks. Uh, congratulations on a great season so far. We'll watch the Eagles. They'll take on Pennsylvania in the first game. Perhaps Alabama. They're in the same part of the bracket as number one, Illinois. Let's go back now to our guys down in Charlotte, uh, Mike and Doug at ESPNU. Mike? Chris, thanks. We're here in our brand new studios at the U. And uh, I'd like to say, before we get to Doug's picks, I want to preface it by somebody went to Oklahoma State. Oh, here we go. Doug, let's see your picks. Well, my picks, quite frankly, very similar to last year. If you look at the fact that Illinois is a team similar, similar to St. Joe's, lacking the inside presence, I like Oklahoma State past Illinois in Chicago. There'll be a whole bunch of orange at the United Center. North Carolina and Kansas, hmm, do these two teams or do the players know the coaches? Mm. That should be interesting. And then Wake Forest and Duke in another matchup in another semifinal. I got Wake Forest. 
North Carolina in my national championship game. And Carolina, much like UConn the la last year, the best team in the country will win the national title. Three out of your four teams from the ACC. All right, well, in the Big 12, the Kansas Jayhawks. They're, well, Jayhawk may not be a real bird, but they are a real team. Will they make the Final Four? Dick and Digger's picks when we come back. During the week, I work in the shop, working on cars. Uh, on the weekend, we come out here, I uh, wind up working on race cars. This is what I drive to the desert. This engine used to smoke when I started it up. Max Life Oil greatly reduced that smoke. 198,000, still going. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. And now look for Max Life oil filters. Another good reason to switch to Max Life. Please rise for our couple's first dance as husband and wife. ESPNU available on DirecTV. Call 1-800- the all-new Ford 500 for $2.99 a month. See it at the Greater Cleveland International Auto Show. Drive it at your local Ford store. Ford, built for the road ahead. Right now, visit your Chevy dealer for sign and drive. With zero down payment, zero due at signing, and zero security deposit on most vehicles, you can leave your checkbook at home. The 2005 Chevy Equinox, the most rear seat legroom of any SUV. Qualified lessees get an 05 Equinox front wheel drive LS for around $276 a month with zero due at signing. Tax title license and dealer fees, extra residency restrictions apply. Call for these details. See your Chevy Network dealers today, official vehicle of the Cleveland Browns. The one I remember is when I was still in college when BYU played Notre Dame and, and Ainge went the length of the floor to, to beat Notre Dame. And, and I think I was the only guy in, in Provo rooting for Notre Dame at the time, even though Danny and I are, are, were friends and still are. <clears throat> but uh, that's, I still remember that like it was yesterday. So does Digger. But nothing personal. He is a BYU graduate. He's allowed to root for the Cougars, Digger. Did you get a computer to make him miss that layup some year? Just let him miss it some year. We see that classic several times a year, and he always knifes oh, the defense. Hey, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. At least he was there coaching. What team have you ever coached to get there? We had a heck of an intramural team. You never team. even coached CYO. Player coach. Yeah. All right, here we go. Go ahead. I love Illinois over Oklahoma State. I think it's going to happen. I, I just think they're too good a basketball team. Wake Forest, to me, going to make it happen. And uh, when you go down below, Florida. I think they're hot. I like Florida, and I also like to see that when we get the next bracket, Illinois wins, Duke and Illinois for the title game. I think Illinois walks away with it. I really, I just think they're on a mission. They're solid defensive. They got the experience, and they just know how to win, and their defense will be there. Their offense is there, and Augustine is the inside present to get it done. What happened to the four horsemen? Four horsemen in Notre Dame. Where are they? Those are my four horsemen. Oh, yeah, but you're talking four horsemen. Augustine. Now you're on Augustine. Everybody's well, on the yeah, Augustine on bandwagon. Yeah, but they needed him to lead the horse. I know, Augustine. <laughs> no. go, I'm going to go with Illinois over Arizona, although I think Oklahoma State is the team that could get in there as well. I like Washington to get there against Illinois. Wake Forest is a really good team, and I think Washington would run past them because of the defensive issues. I'm going to pick Syracuse to get there as a four seed down the bottom of that bracket. I like North Carolina to advance and Illinois to advance, and because of their passing ability, their mental toughness, and the way they can get out and guard people. I'm going to say Illinois is going to be the national champion. That's a few votes for the Illini, a few votes for the Tar Heels, one for Wake Forest. Dick, we're out of time. I don't have a chance to get your picks, but well, you know what? I'm just <laughs> kidding. I love my picks. Oh, no, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and when we come back, the, uh, the dancing pool will make What's his that? picks for uh -oh. the big dance. He didn't do that. Uh -oh. can he seriously didn't do that. Wow, 65 after 12, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Brenda, I'm going to need a or have it when I get back. Here, use the easy button. 
How can I help you? I need something that ends in er. Staple er. No. Paper er. Yeah, no. Office chair er. Wow. Wireless USB adapter. Yes. That's it. Need great service? Use your easy button. Staples. Our staff will help you find exactly what you need and get you on your way. Thanks. You. Staples. That was easy. We spent our whole day dreaming about what an ATM could be, what it should be. We're working on cash deposits at our ATMs, where you won't even have to use an envelope. You put the cash in, our ATM quickly scans, counts the cash, and totals it for you. I'm Dean Kirby. I'm a banker, and I'm proud to be part of Bank of America. Bank of America has more ATMs around the country than any other bank, over 16,000 of them, and we never stop thinking about how to make them better. We've already carved at least six seconds out of the basic transaction. Doesn't sound like a lot unless you think of yourself in a van full of kids like I do. We're also working on transfers and payments at our ATMs. Watch. From checking, take $60 and pay towards your credit card. Or from checking, move $100 into your savings account. We're working on that. Imagine this, depositing checks. Now you see it on the screen and we print that image on your receipt. At Bank of America, we want each of our ATMs to be a mini Bank of America. A mini bank as good as any big bank we've built. Bank of America, higher standards. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential, to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. season finale of Tilt. Ready to lose? Big words. My little man. It's down to the final round. I get the bracelet. You get half the winnings. Tilt. The season finale on a special night tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Toyota. ESPNU Bracketology is presented by Staples. That was easy. And in part by Bank of America Higher Standards. Will it be those Kentucky Cats? Well, who will win the Siemens Trophy, symbolic of the national championship? Well, you can weigh in on ESPN.com, and many of you have, and here is the fans' choice bracket. You've got all the one seeds advancing to the regional championship, except Washington in that region, Louisville and Wake Forest, you see. you got the Illini against the Demon Deacons in one national semifinal, and Duke, North Carolina. We didn't get that matchup in the ACC tournament round three. You think we'll get it in St. Louis, and the top two overall seeds you see meeting in the championship game, and I'm told this was 51-49, so a virtual dead heat. Who's going to win that national championship game, but not a great deal of imagination. North Carolina over Illinois. Mr. Vitale, we do have time for your prediction. Well, thank you. Grace us with them. Wow, okay, let's go with them, baby. Here we go. I like the fighting Illini, man. I like them to march on. I like Wake Forest over Louisville. I like Illinois and Wake Forest to march on and to play each other with Illinois moving on. North Carolina and Duke. Ultimately, it's the fighting Illini in North Carolina. And I got North Carolina cutting the nets down, celebrating on Franklin Street, and winning the national championship. You know, almost everybody here has Illinois or North Carolina. I'll, I'll take the field and give you two guys. Oh, that's nice of you. No, I'll take oh, the, with the parody out there? Those two teams. That's really nice well, okay. of okay. you. Nice. But all the parody, everybody picked don't one get the hurt, top Chris. two overall seeds. Just don't get hurt, really. I hear, I hear a, a lot of parody decision. everybody picking uh, you know, mm -hmm. Illinois or North Carolina. This is not a Tar Heel team that's achieved a whole lot in the way of championships. Oh, wait a minute. They won the regular season of the ACC. You know how tough that league is? You know how tough that league is how many games did you do there this you year how many games have you done there? you picked you've been with that pigskin too long man with that pigskin but i love you you picked him preseason so you're sick of it and i understand that i understand the magazine which magazine important, but uh, i picked him on april 6th last year well, at the final four we had our final choice you gave i'm not going to change now you gave him a great pep talk if they're sitting there and you know, enduring four tough days of practice which roy williams promised before their first round game they need to do a lot of things a lot better than they did in the acc tournament final thoughts i saw you have louisville getting through that you don't like the seat of the cardinals down there at number four. Oh, i think they got no love at all i think rick patino's club wins 18 out of 19 29 and 4. are you kidding me a Phenomenal year, and they get a number four seed. I mean, they could have been considered for a number one seed. That's how good they lost the heartbreaker to Kentucky. And then the reward on top of it, they get Georgia Tech in the second round. Maybe the father, son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to pray. My guy, Rick Pitino, got a raw, raw deal.
Well, let's take a thought about this. The 12 over 5, the last three out of four years, a 12 seed has reached the Sweet 16. Will it be University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee? Will it be George Washington? Will it be Old Dominion? Old Dominion? Or will it be New Mexico? That has happened, and when you're doing your brackets, don't count out the 12 fives, and be careful with the 8 nines, especially Texas and Nevada in there in that first 8 nine with Carolina. You know, one of the more interesting regions is going to be the Albuquerque region. There are a lot of racehorse teams in that region, not a lot of grinded out teams, and that's why I think Gonzaga could have a chance to get all the way to the Final Four. You know, Gonzaga's always been picked as a team that has a chance to get there. This could be the year for Gonzaga. Well, let me say it this year. I've never said it before. I've never thought that Gonzaga could get to the Final Four, but this year, because of their inside play, because of their guard play, because of Adam Morrison, the skilled players that they have, if Gonzaga gets down and guards people, the Zags have a chance this year to get to the Final Four. I've never said that before. I agree with you, Jay. When they go out and beat Oklahoma State, up in Oklahoma City, they beat Washington, they have proven they can play with anyone. Wouldn't that be something to have Gonzaga, the first true mid-major, although Gonzaga, I know has graduated above that, but they come from a mid-major conference. Give some respect to Oakland. Greg <laughs> Campy can pull it off, Fowler. Hey, okay. You don't believe it, but he can do it. I believe in the Golden Grizz at 12 and 18, Chris, and the madness best? does Chris, begin. I, I managed to get by the God. Oh, right? I'll give it to come you. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. By the way, I have to say, come on, make a don't decision. call Dickie V. He's going to be out of the country in Puerto Rico the next few days. He says, got to go speak, baby. Make some cash. I want to catch you. Oh, the opening round game right here on Tuesday night. The Golden Golden Grizz of Oakland against Alabama A&M, and then the madness begins for real, of course, on Thursday. We'll be here with you throughout the NCAA tournament, all the way, of course, to the Final Four in St. Louis. Guys, it's been a, a briskly paced 120 minutes. We really enjoy it. And we'll see you back here on Thursday. Let the true madness begin, and enjoy the ride all the way to St. Louis for the Final Four. Thanks for joining us for our Bracketology special. Wow. Wow. What a day.